I have another problem here that we can uh, look at and use Vim to try and solve. Uh, this comes from day three of the advent of code, uh, the last year's advent of code. This is day three, part two. To explain what's going on here, this is the input file. Every line here represents a, the contents of a backpack. Every character here has some value associated with it, some numerical value, which we'll get to kind of later on. But in every every line here, uh, that's a that represents a backpack. And then what we're trying to figure out is apparently every three lines here that will have a common character uh, in all of those lines. And so I can tell you right now that the the first three lines, it's going to be the capital M character because it appears here, here, and here. And so in each of these three line chunks, we want to figure out what is the common character that appears at least once in each of those sets of three lines. I think there's probably several different ways you could solve this problem. For example, I tried using a regular expression to do this. I couldn't quite get that working, um, and I even got some kind of memory error, but I do think it would be possible with a regular expression. However, I'm not going to I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to take a different approach and if you have an idea of your own that's uh, unique, feel free to share in the comments. Let me know what it is. Let me explain what my idea is. You might be familiar with the bash command called unique. How that works is if I have a bunch of characters like A, A, B, C, D, D. So I'm just gonna highlight this block of text and then I'm gonna use the exclamation mark to do the bash command against that. So unique, that of course gets rid of any duplicate characters that appears in that set. But one cool thing about the unique command is that it also has a feature called, I think it's it, well, I don't know what it's called, but it's dash D. If I do the same thing, but add a dash D, that's going to only give me characters that were repeated. So A and D were the only ones repeated in this set. So we can use that to our advantage, but we're going to have to do some pre-processing or some additional steps before we get to the point where we can actually do that. The first thing is not really that big of a deal. Uh, you'll notice that in order for a unique to work, these characters need to be sorted. But that's not a big deal though because we have another bash program called sort. And I guess I'm kind of cheating by using these two bash commands, but it's whatever. Since we're using Vim, we have the power to do those with the exclamation mark. And another thing we'll have to overcome is notice these lines, sorry, these letters, uh, they're all on the same line, but in order for sort and unique to work, we need to have those on their own, each character on their own line. So that's not too big of a problem. For example, if I wanted to move these characters onto their own line, one way you could do it is with substitute. Maybe there's a better way. If you know, let me know. But you could do substitute. You could do a match group where I look for individual characters. In the replacement part of the substitute command, I can use uh, backslash one to reference that character, followed by backslash r to put it on to do like a new line character. And I can make that global and you see they, they all appear on their own line. So that's how we can fix that. The other problem that we got to figure out in order for this to actually work is best explained by a simplified example, I think. So let me undo that change, take off the highlighting. And let me just say that I have one line where it's A, A, B, and then I have another where it's, um, I don't know, X, X, B. And so B is the answer we're looking for because that's common on both lines. But um, let's say let's say I, you know, I joined those together and then I did the, the, the thing where I move it to, move each character to its own line. I select this block and I try to sort it. And then to get my answer, I'll do that again. And I'll try to unique it with dash D and look, it doesn't work because some of those lines had duplicates in and of themselves that screwed up the answer. Just to be clear, A and A and X and X, we need to figure out how to get rid of those before we actually do the final sort and unique across all lines that we're considering. So really what I want to do, I want to treat each line separately. It'll be a bit more verbose, but it's the same process. We'll just consider each line on their own before we combine them and then unique it to get the final result. So what I mean by that, this is what we should have done. We should have, um, you know, selected this, moved it onto one line, and then we can select this and move that onto one line. And then within this group, so treat the group separately, we can first uh, sort it and then we can unique it without the dash D because we want to get rid of those duplicates. Then we can do the same thing down here, make sure it's sorted, 
and then do unique. And once we do that, we should be able to combine them and do it one more time where we select it all and do a sort. And then finally, one more time, select it all and unique this time with dash D. And that gives me the right answer. So this is the process that I want to go through for every set of three lines in this file. If I can successfully do that on one set of three lines, um, I should be able to do it across the whole file by recording a macro. Let me get rid of this and turn off the highlighting. So I guess before I do the macro though, I want to figure out how many times I'm going to need to execute the macro or replay the macro. I could just look at the bottom and see that there's 300 lines. Since we're going to be operating on three lines at a time, I could say 300 divided by three and just know that off the top of my head. Or um, uh, we could be fancy and just try to compute that, which is what I'm going to do here. So first I'm going to enter the expression register. Normally we've just used the expression register for addition, but you can do a lot more. You can use functions, you can do all kinds of fancy calculations in here. So if I call the line function and pass in a dollar sign, that gets me that 300 number that represents the, the total number of lines in this buffer. And then I can say divide that by three because I know I'm working, the macro is gonna work three lines at a time. And I'm using parentheses just to uh, get the order of operations correctly. And then so the minus one is because we're going to have already executed the macro once and so just remove one from that hit enter that's how we get 99 and then i want to save this into a named register i'm just going to move my cursor to the front here and i can do uh, double quote and a so i'm going to use the at named register a then i'm going to do uh, c dollar sign what i should have done i guess is d dollar sign but doesn't matter and so to demonstrate that it is there, I can do, uh, I can call up the register with a double, double quote, followed by A, followed by P, and you can see there's 99. So I'm gonna keep that value in there uh, for a little while. Now we can actually start writing the macro. Just to be clear, we're gonna first start on this line, the first line. We're gonna do a substitute command, which will, um, it'll select the current line plus two more lines. It's gonna move every character onto its own line, and there's gonna be a new line in between each group. I guess I could show that there's a, there's a line break in between each group. So that's good because we needed to do some stuff in each group. And that stuff that we got to do is we got to sort, sort the group. Uh, then we have to unique the group. And then we do that for every single group. And then once we have done that, we can combine the first two groups and repeat the process because now there might be more duplicates. So, so we'll sort that combined group and then unique that combined group, and then uh, we will then join with the last group and do it one more time. We'll sort it, and then this time we'll unique it with the dash D to get the distinct value that was repeated across all three lines. So let's record that. QQ to begin recording and recording into the Q register. And then first thing I'm gonna do is set a mark, and the mark is just gonna help us keep track or be able to move the cursor in a certain way so that the, the macro lines up when we start to repeat it. MA, set a mark. Now let's do that range that I showed earlier. So we'll do a substitute. So colon dot comma dot. Uh, this is a range for the, the current line. And then if I do plus two, that's gonna be the current line plus two more lines uh, following it. Now I'll just the, the match group for any character. I have to use extra slashes because I'm not in very magic mode. I don't really like using it actually. So then in the replacement portion, I can reference that match group with slash one, and I can do slash R for the new line and make this global so that it applies to all the characters on that line, not just the first one. Next, I'm gonna jump up to where I set my mark with single quote A, and then I'm going to visually select this paragraph. So VIP, visually select the inner paragraph. Vim treats blocks of contiguous, like lines of contiguous text as a paragraph. So visually selecting all of that, this is the first group. And so first thing we need to do is uh, sort it. And then we can select it one more time and unique it without the dash D because we want to get rid of those duplicates. Next, I want to move down into the second group. And so if I use the open brace, or sorry, close brace, that'll get me most of the way there. So I'll do another J to put me inside there. Then we'll just do the same thing. 
we'll do VIP and then a sort and then VIP again and then a unique. Now we should be safe to combine the first and second groups. So um, again, I'll do the, the, well, I guess I'll do a, an opening brace uh, to move me up between these two groups and capital J. Now they're combined into one group so that when I do VIP again, I select both the first and the second group. And so then I can do a sort, select it one more time and do a unique. And this time it actually makes sense to do the dash D because we want to get rid of, or we want to know what, what those duplicates are between the first and second groups. So we'll run that. Now we have a very smaller set for those first and second groups. I'll now move down into the third group by um, doing the closing brace and then J again to get me down actually into it. And now we'll kind of repeat this again. VIP and then we'll sort it and then VIP again and then we'll unique it. Now we're ready to do the final combination. Uh, so I'll do a opening brace to move me up between the two uh, groups of text and then uh, capital J to combine them and now we'll just select it VIP sort and with any luck this will give us just an M so we'll VIP once more and unique dash D this time there's an M so that's good now one final motion to before we close out this macro um, I'll do a Closing brace followed by J uh, to put me right into position for the this to be repeated. And so I'll press Q to end recording. And so we've got a lot writing on this macro. It was <laughs> very long to write. So I really hope it works out when we go to repeat this. Now, normally to replay a macro, you would probably do it um, from normal mode, uh, but there is a way. So since we have that, that variable, the 99 sitting in the A, the named register A, um, I want to reference that from a normal command. There may be a better way, but um, the way that I know of to do this is you can use exe for execute and then norm for normal. And then I can do a control R followed by A, which is where the 99 is sitting. And then I can do at Q for the macro we just recorded. And then cross our fingers um, that this works. Okay, looks like we have less lines and it's looking pretty good. There's one single character on um, like every other line. So those are presumably the unique, or not the unique, the, the duplicated lines or the common characters. Like I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video, each of these characters has a numerical value associated with them. And I'm looking at the problem statement here and so it turns out Lowercase, so A through Z, lowercase, have values 1 through 26, and then uppercase, A through Z, has 27 through 52. So um, we need to convert the, these letters into those values and then sum that up to get the answer. I'm going to turn the highlighting off. Um, so Vim has a built-in function called char to nr, character to number. And this will give us, if, if we give it a character, it will give us like the code point value. So um, as an example, if I do char to nr a, lowercase a, that's giving me 97. So this will be a very handy function to use in order to convert these. We can just basically plug each of these letters into that function and then do some a bit of math to offset the value to the appropriate one that we're looking for from the problem statement. Before we do our substitute to do that, let's do let's get rid of these um, empty lines here. So I'll replace any line that has uh, nothing on it. And so there we go, 100 fewer lines. So I need a substitute command that is going to do. So let's do um, across the whole file. We're going to substitute. Anytime we see lowercase a through z, um, you can see it's highlighting those already. I want to replace that, and instead of doing 
you know, a, just a straight up value, uh, we can also do the slash equals sign to do an expression replacement. And so in here I can use char to nr. So normally to reference our match group, you know, remember we would do like backslash one, backslash whatever. Um, but since we're in expression land, uh, we need to do submatch and submatch zero because I didn't actually specify a match group. So zero is just going to be the entire match. So char to nr submatch zero. And then uh, you can already see it's showing us what value it will be, but we need to offset the value a little bit according to the problem. Um, in, like in the problem statement. The problem statement says that a through z lowercase have 1 through 26 values. To offset that, we could do nine, minus 97 plus 1, um, and that should give us the correct value. So we'll run that, and that should, take, that should have taken care of the lowercase values. Now we can do the same thing for the uppercase values, a through z. Everything's the same except for the math is just a little bit different. So this time uh, so I'll do 65 minus uh, 20, or sorry, plus 27. So I'll run that. And now we have all our letters converted into their numerical values. And now finally, we're basically on the home stretch now. We can select everything. So VIP should do it. Hit J to move them all to one line. And we're just, if you've seen the last couple of videos I made, we're just setting up to do some addition in the expression register. So I can do um, a substitute. Anytime I see a space, I can do a plus uh, globally. Then I can do C dollar sign to clear everything into the unnamed register. And then I will uh, enter the expression register, control R equals, followed by control R double quote to paste that big summation in there. Hit enter. 2,639. There's the moment of truth where we check the answer. Uh, part 2, 2,639. There it is. I'm sorry this one was a bit longer, but um, this was kind of a, a little bit more complicated. Hopefully I've demonstrated that if you want to make your life more difficult, more challenging, Vim is the tool for you. <laughs> you can find the most weird ways to do uh, problems like this, um, but I think it's really fun. But hopefully you've, in, you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, you know, if you saw something in the video that you're like, oh, I know a, another way to do that, or if you have a whole another idea of how to solve the problem, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching.